Hi there. My name is Ben and in this video I will discuss terms of service agreements and how they affect users rights. I will look at a specific case using Meta, the company that used to be called Facebook, to examine their terms of service, see what they are and what they mean for users of its services. It's a familiar story for most people. It goes something like this. You have heard about a new website, app, social media platform, even a video game, and want to watch, play or participate. You load the thing and try to sign up, but before you can do so, you have to agree to the terms of service. The terms of service is the legal agreement between yourself and the service provider where you agree to be bound by their conditions if you wish to use their service. Either you pour over the details of the terms of service and evaluate the pros and cons, or you just click agree with nary thought and continue on your way. But what have you agreed to? That's the problem with terms of service agreements in a nutshell. Almost no one actually reads them, and yet agreeing to them is fraught with risk for the individual, particularly related to how companies and organisations may use and abuse their personal data and privacy in ways that may limit their freedom of expression, exploit their content, or otherwise enact in ways that someone would not typically consent to. So before we look at Meta's terms of service, we should figure out why most people don't read these important documents. The answer is simple. People skip reading them because they're too long, too complex, too uninteresting, and of course they may simply not have the time to do so. The research bears this out. A recent study found that 93% of users skipped the terms of service and agreed without reading when joining a new social networking service. The same study found that terms of service averaged around 5,000 words in length. The average adult reading speed for English language readers is around 250 words per minute. So if somebody took the time to read the entire document, it would take about 20 minutes. For a slow reader, it would take much longer. This is a considerable barrier on its own. The implications of not reading privacy policies and terms of service can be serious. If users do not read the agreements before they sign them, they do not know what the rights they are ceding to the service provider, including how their information will be used. A 2018 experiment is illustrative. The experimenters encouraged students at a sample group of American universities to sign up for a fake social media site called NameDrop, whose terms of service included granting outrageous rights to the service provider, such as giving them the rights to name their firstborn child and having their data passed directly to American intelligence agencies. Lucky for them, it was an experiment and not real. But what if it wasn't? We have established that terms of service can include provisions that may be exploitative, and users will generally remain ignorant of this. So now let's take a look at Meta and see what rights users cede to them by agreeing to their terms. By agreeing to use Meta, a user agrees to grant Meta and its companies a non-exclusive, transferable, sub-licensable, royalty-free and worldwide license to host, use, distribute, modify, run, copy, publicly perform or display, translate and create derivative works from contents that you share, post or upload on or in connection with Meta's products. In other words, they can use our images, videos, and so on to create whatever they want, and they don't have to pay you for it or explicitly seek your permission. The terms expressly forbid users from using Meta's IP, however, so it isn't one-way street. You essentially grant Meta carte blanche to use your content and your images as they see fit. For example, Facebook, as Meta's central product, has been referred to academically as a high identity affordance platform due to its terms of use policy requiring that users use their real identity and its technical infrastructure allowing for the easy sharing of photos, increasingly converged with Instagram for ease of sharing as well, and uploading of videos. This means anything you have ever input to a meta product, such as a Facebook account, could be used, for example, as a data set for an AI that could be made to produce AI-generated images, text, or video content based on your agreement that meta may publicly perform or display derivative works from your content. Just how comfortable would you be with an AI-generated character that looks and sounds like you being used for online advertising, for example? Meta also notes that they will use your data to show you ads that are targeted to your interests, though it is careful to note that it respects your privacy and gives you control over your personal data, stating that users can choose to opt out of personalized advertising and delete or manage your personal data at any time. But there are claims that user data remains on Meta servers even after profiles have been deleted. The final condition of concern is how Meta uses your data to provide other services, such as using your location data to suggest local restaurants and things of that nature. So to recap, when you agree to use a Meta service, you agree they can use your content and works derived from it without payment, agree they will use your data to personalize your advertising, and agree to them tracking your location. While in and of itself, this does not necessarily correlate with disruption to online community, activist networks, and other approaches to organizing, the simple existence of that information being retained by the company means that it is accessible to police with warrants and subpoenas. We have already seen this play out. In 2020, an American woman named Violet was arrested for her participation in a counter-protest to a Resist Marxism march, with police obtaining her location and other data such as messenger content, mobile numbers, and phone requests. 
Things like this can have a chilling effect on democratic participation by causing people to avoid things like protests that they may otherwise wish to join, sending governments the message that everyone is okay with their policies. That's all we have time for today. Remember, think before you click agree. Please see my bibliography in the video description. This video was created using Pictree under the CC0 license.